that I would rather have him pay taxes and help me because you know our roads, our bridges, our schools, everything else is supported by taxes. The more successful people of every race are, the more I benefit. We are all on this boat. But that's, I, that's the way most Republicans should be. Right? Well, that's, that's the way I find most people. At least most people that I know, uh, that's the way they do it then. Because, because Democrats don't think that way. That Democrats view everything as a war between us and them. And they've divided our votes, <laughs> and they've decided that we're going to incite people. And this is done for votes. This, uh, as we've seen with the run-up to the election, there was this hysteria with the war on women, with the Black Lives Matter, right up to the election, just to stir things up. Notice how that died off since the election? Yeah. And then you tell me that this is not done for votes. They and they do this every time before the election. So when George Bush ran against Al Gore, there was a, a commercial with, a, um, with James Byrd, his children, saying that uh, if George Bush gets elected, uh, this is what will happen to black people. George Bush was not a Klansman. Whatever flaws that he may have had, James Byrd's murderers got the death penalty, which is what they should have got which is what George Bush responded. He goes, well, what should we do with them? We already gave them the death penalty. What is, like, that's the highest penalty we could give them. And they do this every single election. And whether it's, whether it's black people or any other people, we benefit, all of us, even if we're not part of that group of people, from every group of people succeeding. Because they pay taxes that way. Instead of costing us taxes, sitting on a while for being in jail is extremely costly to all the rest of us. <coughs> being a bad student eventually costs all of us. And unfortunately, the Republicans have not done a good job responding to it because, to some degree, it's because we are scared to respond to it. Because yes. what do the Democrats do every time? Just scream racism, sexism, homophobia, xenophobia, anti-Semitism, and so on. So in my campaign, as soon as I, as I announced that I'm running, uh, because my district had uh, was predominantly Jewish, it goes from um, Mill Basin to Borough Park, it goes um, right here, and right in Beach, uh, Ships of Bain. They decided, and there is a video still of it online, to proclaim that I am a neo-Nazi skin. They're inclusive these days, aren't they? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I'm very, very Jewish. <laughs> um, but they didn't know that, which, you know, was a little bit unfortunate for them because at one point they doubled up on them. Uh, and then they began talking about um, my neo-Nazi and skinhead connections. And I'm sitting there going, but they would kill me if I had connections to them. They, like, they hate Okay, David Duke wrote three books, all of them about how much he hates my people. Okay, I, like it's very hard for me to join skinheads. Um, also, I've never, been, I've never shaved my hair. So, and they, they stuck with it, and then for a while they began trying to prove that I'm not Jewish. And then at one point, I was apparently trying to destroy Israel by, by helping Iran, which is surprising because most of my family lives in Israel. Uh, I was also responsible for, apparently, for the Serbian genocide of Bosnians. Oh, you're busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I didn't know. I mean, that was when I was in high school. <laughs> Then they finally agreed that I was Jewish, and it turns out that I was the best friend of Putin. That's how Trump became friends with the best friends of Putin, I introduced him. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, at the time, Russia was preparing for the Winter Olympics, and all of Putin's friends were getting like two, three, four, five, seven billion dollar contracts. And I was like, mm -hmm. I mean, 
I'll sell out for seven billion dollars. <laughs> Where's my seven billion dollars? Come on. Like, I, mean, they, 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 like, I mean, I'm pretty sure all of you would want to be friends with somebody who will give you seven billion dollars. Okay, so I'm not gonna sell out for all the politicians that they sell out for like that kind of money. Seven billion dollars is pretty good, you know. I, mean, I don't know what Putin does to other people, but he gives us seven billion dollars. I'm gonna introduce him to Donald Trump. I'll vote for him. <laughs> so. I mean, and this just went on for a while, and then at one point, um, and this was early on in the whole me being friends with Putin thing, they actually claimed, and it's still online to this day, that um, when I came to the United States at the end of 1991, is that the fall of the Soviet Union, the reason I came here is that I was working as a KGB agent for many years before I came here. <laughs> Now, look at me. 1991 is 25 years ago, right? More than 25 years ago. Look at me. How old was I and was I capable of being a, a long-time KGB? Well, I don't know. You know, you know what they did with Lenin? You know, they came alive. It looks like he's So old. the good news is that I was able to finally tell my mom I was getting such bad grades in second grade because instead of learning to read and write, I was you know, spying for the KGB. I was a colonel or something. I don't know, because I was a long-time KGB. In 1991, look at um, So we need to... And one thing that we wound up doing is fighting back against them because we made a conscious decision that whatever they're going to throw at us, we're not going to apologize. This is what they do. They play their uh, rate, or in this game, it's kind of Semitic card. They play, um, you know, every one of their usual cards. And I mean, we kind of saw with Donald Trump the same thing that they said about me, which is why I'm having a hard time believing all their hysteria because. Unfortunately, I don't have seven billion dollars in food. Um, so, and I'm pretty sure Donald Trump did not sell out the United States to Putin when he already has, what, 18 billion dollars. He's the one you probably cannot buy with seven billion dollars. Like, the one guy you actually cannot buy with foreign money is accused by the people who took about 200 million dollars from foreign governments yeah. of selling out to a foreign government. The Clinton Foundation took all that money. They're the ones who did favors. They're the ones who, for instance, took in, uh, off Indian sanctions nu for nuclear weapons. After getting a donation, immediately after getting a donation, within a couple of weeks. And they're the ones making the accusation. <coughs> they're the ones who stoke the, the who stoke racial anger, and they're the ones who are making the accusations. They're the ones who are violent. Name one Republican riot. In any of our lifetime, name one, one Republican riot. Name one, not one. Yet every year we have at least one liberal riot. Every year. They talk about Republicans being anti-constitutional. Anti what right in the Constitution did Republicans ever oppose? It's something that actually says in the Constitution, not something that they actually, that they went out and invented because there's a whole bunch of rights uh, in the Constitution, because apparently James Madison and Thomas Jefferson really, really cared about gay marriage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was a major issue for them. I, I mean, I remember reading in the Federalist Papers how much they debated gay marriage, and they were all in favor with it, apparently. Um, you know, but what right that is in the Constitution are the Republicans opposed to? Free speech? No Republican ever blocks somebody from speaking. If a liberal shows up, no matter what he says, Republicans go, okay, I disagree with you, but I support the right to speak. A Republican shows up, like Ben Shapiro, who's like this big, like this little uh, Orthodox Jew who I'm sure never got arrested for anything. He's like this big, right? And they're like, it is a danger to us. Uh, no, no, he's not a danger to anyone. Meanwhile, he gets threatened on HBO by a guy who was in the Navy Sea, I'm sorry, in the uh, Army Rangers. And that's okay. He also was barred to speak at a college. Campus. He was also barred in a lot of places. But there's a young woman, uh, Lauren Southern, who mentioned that she believes that there's only two genders, who had urine poured poor in her, who was punched in the face by a guy. That is the law, and that is why we need to stand up to them. Because we need to stop apologizing. They are 
bullies in the most basic sense. No bully ever goes, you know, I'm a bad person, I'm just gonna bully someone. No bully says it. You know what every bully says? Oh, he harmed me first. He said something to provoke me. And I had no choice but to punch someone. You always have a choice but to punch someone. Unless they punched you first and they keep on punching you. There's, I mean, when you talk about abusive husbands or parents or high school bullies or anyone, that's what they say. He said something, therefore I have to punch him. And we need to stop apologizing. No more apologies. When they say, oh, you are whatever it is that you are. No, you throw it right back at them and you stand your ground and you don't defend yourself. Under no circumstances do you defend yourself. You attack them the whole time. When he called me a neo-Nazi skinhead, we took that issue and we ran with it. The last debate on TV was the night before the election, and I made sure that that debate was going to be about him calling me a neo-Nazi skinhead. And that guy was right there. Senator, how are you? Thank you. Thank you. And that was one of the people who actually made, uh, made that decision. That we're not going to defend ourselves. We're going to fight back. And I was a little scared about it at first. And I remember uh, when uh, Lou Fiddler doubled down on that. And I, you know, got, like you don't enjoy waking up in the morning and people going, this is a danger to society. And I remember Liam going, oh, this is great. This is great. The Daily News just picked up the story about you being a Nazi. You know, and apparently Liam knew at the time, this is five years ago, a lot more than I knew about it. Because it really was a great decision that we made to fight back. We should apologize over everything. And that's what Donald Trump won. Because you cannot be a pushover. If you cannot stand up for yourself, you cannot stand up for all of us. That's the most basic, that's the most basic thing. This is, um, we as Republicans have been pushing. Every time the Democrats say something, we back down. Every time they say, our rights are justified, we go, oh, well, maybe you have a point. You don't have a point. No matter what Glenn says to me right now, <laughs> I'll punch him. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll have a heart attack. <laughs> but there's no, point, there's no point that the left has. They hate it. They are what they accuse us of being. That's Every person sees on others what they see in themselves. You know, like if you ever speak to people who are like thieves, they always assume that somebody else is stealing. If you speak to somebody who's like a prostitute, they always assume that everyone else does it. Like people, or people, somebody who's very nice, they assume that everyone is very nice. And the left judges us by themselves. <laughs> what is it? Oh, the little girl. Oh, what are you talking? Okay. <laughs> oh, gee. Oh, yeah, gee, please. So, <laughs> if we, so those are my two main points. One is that we need to organize from the bottom up. It's not going to happen from the top down. It's going to be <coughs> people giving fifty dollar donations. It's going to be people showing up and volunteering. It's going to be people running for office when everyone says you cannot march. And the second thing is, as soon as they will figure out that you can win, they will say stuff. That's how you know you can win. You should take it as good news. If they don't attack you, they're probably not taking you seriously. But as soon as they think that you're serious, they will figure out why you are a danger to society. And you should be ready for it. And you should fight back against it. Because our side is right on economics, on racial issues, on social issues. The average person will still stand with us. And we've seen that with uh, most recently, just now, with Donald Trump, who refused to back down. And no matter what he would say, he would just never apologize. And sometimes he would say things that are way, way, way above and beyond what you're supposed to say. <laughs> right? Yeah. But there's a reason why he said it. No. You know why he said it? Because if you've been bullied, the only, the only thing that you can do at that point is to fight back. Yeah. Yeah. A kid who was never bullied doesn't have to do it. Yeah. A kid who's getting beaten on a daily basis needs to throw a punch. It may be too far for that kid, but he needs to do it. And that's essentially what he did. It's kind of like the way that we see in other places where, let's say, women don't have any rights, and they will go to the extremes, 
something that no woman in the United States might need to do because they need to prove a point. They need to take it to the extreme. That's what he did. Sometimes you have to do it. But don't ever let the media and don't let the Democrats make you apologize. We have nothing to apologize for. We are the party that stands for equality, actual equality, not equality of outcome that they want with everyone making the same income, but the quality of opportunity, which is the real equality. If I play basketball against LeBron James and he beats me, that is not a conspiracy. He's just a better basketball player. Okay? It's funny how I wind up even with LeBron James. That is unfair. You know why? Because I must have been getting a, a 200 points for every shot that I made. Okay? And he must have gotten zero for the, every one that he makes. That is the real equality. Equality of chance, of opportunity. So, <clears throat> I apologize. Don't apologize. <laughs> <laughs> when I won, I said, and Liam was there, and a bunch of you were there, I got up on the stage, and there was a whole bunch of people who are politically involved, uh, elected officials, and so on. And my speech involved the words, We won. Over and over again. Over and over again. And you know what happened? All the politicians standing in the back were horrified. <laughs> you can't say that. And all the people in front of me, hundreds and hundreds of people began chanting, we won, we won. Because for once, we actually won. All those people in Europe were frustrated with Bill de Blasio and with Nadler and with Weinstein, you represent right. And with all the other liberals, and a lot of those people are Democrats themselves, who are just not extremist liberals, they felt like they won, and they deserve better than what we've given them so far. They deserve victories. They deserve to have their voice heard. Please, when you get out of here, make your voice heard. Go and help someone, or run yourself. Donate, volunteer, do something because your neighbor, your mom, your wife deserves better than this. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Excellent. So, are you running for mayor? <laughs> no. Yeah. Not here? Why not? 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 Every, th every day in a campaign, there's always a fight, right? Somebody's calling your name, some something is happening. Okay. And every time there's a pro problem, we're like, where's Liam? Liam, let's go, you and me, just in the private room. You tell me what's, gonna, what's happening. Because Liam is brilliant. If you want somebody to know, to understand politics, the issues, the procedure, and so on, there is no better man who's been involved in politics for 20 years of his life since he was 18 years old in every capacity as a um, winning campaign manager, as a, um, uh, as a losing campaign manager, as a losing campaign manager, as a, losing campaign manager, as a lost. but you still need to figure out, to learn from why campaigns lose. As somebody who was a staffer at all levels, this is somebody who would make us proud. And I've known Liam as a friend. I've known Liam as a um, uh, colleague. I've known Liam as somebody who worked on my campaign. Uh, Liam is something that we deserve. When I talk about our neighborhood deserves better. Their neighborhood, Bay Ridge, also deserves better, and Liam is better. Go on. Can, I, can I say one thing about uh, Liam? Um, when I ran for state assembly, 
Leah and I had a quick conversation, and he was asking me, how was the fundraising going? And I said, it's like pulling teeth. In less than two hours, I received a donation whose name was on it. Leah. That's right. So he's looking out for us. Thank you.